In this episode of SG Now, City Joe Abbey acts in a theater play as a bacterium that lives in your mouth and does terrible things to your teeth. City Joe Morag meets a man who's saving our bees that plays a huge part in giving Singapore a healthy ecosystem. City Joe Kwan gets adventurous by eating in a halal Mediterranean restaurant that has its beginnings in New York. And City Joe Bruce meets a one-time youth at risk who wants to turn Papayo's youth at risk around. Hello, hello, hello. And today's top story is about teeth. That's right, teeth. Mm, that's right. Actually, it's about Carius and Baptist, two characters from a play about dental health. Mm -hmm. Based on a popular Norwegian children's book and produced by the Norwegian Cultural Centre here in Singapore, Carius and Baptist is a fun-filled play with healthy message for children everywhere. Well, let's hear the story from City Joe Abbey. Hello, hello! Today we're going behind the scenes of Carius and Bactus, an upcoming children theatre play. And you must be thinking, Carius and Bactus, what strange names! That's because it's based on a famous Norwegian children's story and Norwegian Cultural Centre is bringing it to Asia for the first time. They'll be doing it in both English and Chinese. And in fact, the Chinese version, it is a world premiere. No one in the world has ever done this story in Chinese before. And Singapore is the first to see it. So let's go take a look. Karius and Baktis is a Norwegian children's novel, first published in 1949. The main characters, Karius and Baktis, are two small tooth trolls that live inside the cavities in the teeth of a boy named Jens. They have a very good life, especially when the little boy fails to brush his teeth. The story played a big part in raising the dental awareness in the Scandinavian communities. After this play was out, uh, or this story was out, the dental problems decreased a lot. And, a, and it did not only affect the children, actually even adults. And so, when the Norwegian Cultural Centre wanted to bring Norwegian stories to Singapore, Karius and Baktis became the natural choice. Like the characters are so cute and it's like, it's a children's play so of course the plot is quite simple but the magic is in making the characters alive. You really love and hate the characters. The, the part, especially the last part, when you see the characters, they are being washed out of the mouth, they are losing their home and you really feel for them. It's like, oh my god, they are losing their homes. But at the same time, it's like, no, if they are living in my mouth, I want them out. So there's this um, pinch of um, love-hate relationship. Wow, so the actors have to make the children love and hate them at the same time while toggling between the English and Chinese versions. How are they handling it? Uh, there are different feelings when you, when you be a narrator with both English and Mandarin. Yeah. No, but for me, I think uh, my forte is English, but um, I want to challenge myself to speak more Mandarin. I think the hardest part about doing both the English and Chinese versions simultaneously is that half the time when I'm doing the English version, then the Chinese lines wants to come out. <laughs> like my, my mind has do a lot of mental gymnastics. While a children's play is lots of fun, with beautiful sets, energetic songs and colourful costumes, it is also very tiring for the actors, both physically and vocally. However, the team is pressing on as they believe that this play is important and relevant to our children in Singapore. Even though it's a Norwegian children's play, right, but the context of the play itself, the theme of your rotting teeth is, is prevalent everywhere, right? Not only in Norway. Even though, yes, it's a hassle, sometimes you find it like lazy to brush your teeth and all sorts, um, but it's 
it's, it's a need and important because if you don't and then you will go through even more hassle you have to go through dentists and, and toothache and cavities and then you'll be in pain it's just just a simple story but it has a strong message I love children theatre plays. I think they are always so magical, so imaginative, full of energy and positivity. So if you too want to experience the magic of Karius and Bactus, do check out the social media of Norwegian Cultural Centre for more information or simply head over to Cystic to get your tickets. Um, by the way, I'm sure you know this by now, but yeah, so I'll be in the show acting as Bactus. So do come and support, yeah? I'll see you there. Yeah. This is City Joe Abbey from Singapore One. Oh, that looks so fun and so colourful. But you know what? I'm sure you can't snack on sweets and candies <laughs> while watching the play. I'm sure they wouldn't allow that. <laughs> if you'd like to find out more about the show, which has performances in English and Chinese, we've included a link in the description below. Mm. Hey, you know, one of the most important creatures in the world is also one of the most underrated. Oh, I feel that too, you know, mm. I know, woman, right? Oh, but I don't really quite like the word creature being used to refer to women. Can you find another word more appropriate? No, 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 I'm not talking about women. I'm actually talking about bees. Bees are a vital part of the ecological balance and biodiversity. Right. And through pollination, they provide a vital ecological service, which makes food production possible. You know what? I realise. The usual response we have when we find a bee's nest near our house in Singapore is to call the exterminators. Oops. And that's why we have Saviour Time from Nutri Nest to the rescue, offering a humane way to remove bees from populated areas. Siri Joe Morak met up with him to find out why he cares so much about bees. Are you Xavier? Lovely to meet you, hi. I'm here in Zimbabwean this morning with Mr. Xavier Tan of Nutrinest. He left behind a career in logistics management with a global IT company to follow his passion. He has a mission. He wants to save Singapore's bees one nest at a time. As Xavier walks me through the garden to meet the bees, he shows off the wide selection of fruits, vegetables and plants growing there. So I learned about how important we are to our environment. So I picked up the interest. In fact, I also helped to save the bees in Malaysia. At that time, they do a lot of deforestations. So a lot of hive, a lot of bee colony lost their hive or their original locations. And we actually go and take those bee and then relocate them. So how how do you move a how do you move a nest? Uh, well, okay. So it depends on the type of bees. Those bees that behind you, uh, we have to remove the whole colony, and then keep them in the box, and then bring transfer them to a uh, different locations. So, so this. Mm -hmm. So do you cut off the, the branch? Yes, and for just those on top is cut off the branch. The essential skills necessary for moving a bee is to be able to identify where is the queen bee and transfer her gently into a hive so that she will call the rest of the bee to follow her into the new locations okay. so that we can actually remove them in a very uh, at their own will so like i say they're actually very friendly as long as you don't disturb their hive just how you walk through the garden, right? Mm -hmm. There's bees flying around. Mm -hmm. You probably didn't even notice it. Yeah. They're yeah. not really aggressive. They're aggressive uh, if you disturb their hive. And I find it very ridiculous because in every part of the world, people are trying to protect the bees. Mm. But in Singapore, when people found a beehive, they will call in the pest control and kill them. Mm -hmm. They cannot coexist with the bee. They want the bee to be removed. Then I provide a service to help people to humanely removing the bee. Okay. Uh, and so that the bee won't get killed. Xavier's first goal is for us to learn not to fear the bees and to find ways to coexist. Ask for help to relocate a hive if you have to, but then you can adopt the colony and leave them with Xavier. All his bees have been rescued. Recently, Xavier launched his petition to have local bees protected under the Wildlife Act. The response from the public is I actually garnered about 800 over signature already and uh, also re and I also approached the government to actually talk about this as well. I'm actually in conversation with MPAC. They wanted to uh, you know, promote conservation of bees, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, they are concerned about public safety 
I mean, realistically, how often do people get attacked by bees? I would say it's very minimum. It's actually, if you, just, uh, if you go to the website and check mm. the statistic, car accident is way higher uh, than yeah. bee attack. Well, this is what I think. Attack. My whole life growing up in, yeah. in Scotland, and we had lots of bees. Yes. Uh, I never so much as got stung. If we continue to have these exterminations, you're going to see, uh, I can foresee a reduction of bee population. Mm -hmm. And maybe to the extent that it becomes alarming situations. Mm. So we got to do something before the things happen. When I try to do beekeeping, I need to learn about gardening. When you learn about gardening, you need to learn about the whole, uh, you know, the, the food chain cycle. Naturally, have to take care of everything, not just one thing. So it's, everything is connected. Yeah. The whole, uh, and is this one of the reasons why bees are so important? Mm -hmm. Because they're part of a chain? That's right. So, so the whole, whole thing, the whole cycle is linked together. At, at any one point, it, it breaks, right? It's going to jeopardize the whole cycle. Xavier hopes his petition will raise awareness and get us all talking about the bees because the bees' future is our future. This is City Joe Monag McGee, and I'm going off to sign the petition to help save the bees. Well, if you'd like to find out more about the work that Nutri Nest does, or if you think you need a bee's nest removed humanely, we have put up the link to Xavier's company's website in the description below. During these difficult times, we find many innovative and inspiring stories. A few brave souls decided that they would turn their personal potential disaster into an amazing opportunity. That's right, based in Arab Street area, Overrise is inspired by the famous New York pushcart vendors, the Halal Guys. Mm. So check out their tasty Halal Mediterranean-influenced rice bowls in our next video. Sometimes the best ideas are not original. Behind me is Overrise, a hip diner opened last year and is drawing in the crowd. Turns out that the founders are frequent travellers around the world and we decided to bring the food here. Soon I'll be chatting with them and to find out what's so special about the food. This is City Joe Guan. Come join me. Okay, Sean. Hello. So, tell me, how did, how did all this start? When, when COVID hit our shores, yep. you and your friends you badly hit, huh? Yes, really bad. I guess many of us lost our jobs. Many of us had to work from home and there were a lot of setbacks that everyone faced. Um, but we sort of figured something out and over a nice chit chat with my three other partners, we decided to come up with a uh, business, um, something that we have never done before. Um, Which is? Food. We are not cooks to begin with. Um, we just love to eat, but and we love to travel. And I guess in that sense, we all did a trip together where we were in New York and we chanced upon this place called the Halal Guys. So they're actually a pushcart vendor that um, sells a Mediterranean food that's uh, a mixture of different kinds of meats, be it gyro, chicken, falafels and all, and they, they put it together in a plate, um, aluminum foil sort of thing, concept, and then uh, with rice, pita, lettuce and tomatoes. Um, so we were all four of us were just standing in the cold having that, and we thought that it was really good for us to be enjoying this moment together as friends. And mm. I, I guess that was one of the highlights in our chat that we were talking about that when we were thinking about what should we do next. Back then, when we first started home base, it was just called chicken over rice because that was the only thing we knew how to make. Uh, <laughs> we were home base for about three to four months. And then you decided that? And then we decided to try something different and have a sort of a central kitchen concept, but we were operating from a food court. Uh -huh. So we released a, a food court a stall and we literally were cooking in that food court. But it was still on a delivery basis. And it was la. still purely on home-based delivery basis. Because I, I remember, if I remember correctly, during that period, it's still 
uh, CBP, right? Correct. So, so, so there's no visitations into the food court. So from from a home based business uh, module, yep. you went on to having a kind of like a central kitchen thingy. Correct. You use this period to build up your following. Yep. And of course, with the power of um, social media, Correct. you kind of made a namesake for yourself, right? Yes. And then you decided to go big, or you guys decided to go big? Um, yeah, we decided to go big because we were left with a really small opportunity. Then we started our hunt in looking for a place that we can call our restaurant. We are still learning, we are still very new right here in this outlet, we are just passing a year old. Um, everything is still a journey for us. We are not masters of the industry. We are still the new boys, the new kids on the block, trying to build our brand, trying to build Overrise, uh, a new staple for our Singaporeans and our Singapore lovers for food. Wow, this looks amazing and smells wonderful. This is Siri Joe Guan tucking into my bowl of Overrise. Ah, uh, almost every episode we have one topic about food and it gets me hungry and then later I'll go try this new restaurant. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to lose weight and they're trying to put on weight for me. Why? It's true, you know, we always find ourselves in this stuck routine every time. <laughs> but no, we certainly shared some pretty amazing places. Of course, we don't just feature fantastic food. We also spend a lot of time talking to inspiring people. In our last story today, CD Joe Bruce meets one such person who's working with youth at risk in Topayo. What's up, Singapore? Recently on social media, I saw the opening of a new club called Hug Youth Community Club at Topayo. I'm on my way there now to find out more about them. This newly opened youth club isn't just a safe environment where teenagers can come and hang out and chill. It also provides mentorship and counselling to the youths at risk. So through my dad, I get to know Pastor Jeff and he eventually um, helped me out during this process. Journey still today, I would say that uh, many times I get a lot of heart brokenness because journey with youth has never been easy. Uh, to do case, sometimes you get disappointed. I love the cool vibes this place is giving off. It even has a pool table that teens can come and play for free. I spent the whole afternoon there chilling and having some fun with the boys. Yes! Hello, I'm Nathan. I'm from Hot Community Services. So my journey began as a troubled teen and I was brought here for a chance of transformation. So after going through my transformation, I am now here today as a full-time staff. And hi, my name is Jeff. I'm the founder of Heart Community. Heart Community started at 2010. My passion for Heart Community is that youth. I found that in, right now in this uh, in Singapore, there's a lot of so-called youth that built up a goal and it's very painful for the family. I see, I walk through, during the walk through with the family, they see a lot of broken family, brokenness. So when I started Heart Community, I want to journey with them. With this goal, it's not easy for me. The time that I start looking for a place, it's only started from a small consultant offices. But today, you look at this space that we have that's just launched last Saturday. I thank God that People see us, people support us because they say the same vision that we have. And this passion, this fire will not stop, it will continue. Hi, my name is Lawrence. Uh, I'm 17 this year and I'm a youth volunteer in, over here at Hub Community Services. So at year 2017, at the age of 13, uh, I was arrested for acting on behalf of uh, loan sharks. So I committed, I was charged under arson and unlicensed, unlicensed money lending and I was sentenced to probation for 30 months. Towards the end of my probation, I met people here at Hub Community Services. So being in this place, 
uh, uh, founder and co-founder, Pastor Jeff and Pastor Grace, they gave me a vision and had I became I had a passion for serving youth at risk and helping them to journey through their cases. I have a dream. The dream is not I'm not contented only got one heart community center in Papua New West. Not, not because of the center. I will serve. I will serve more that collaborate with people in Singapore, North, South, East, West. That more center to be up to help more youth. I am so happy that there is a center like this, helping our youth to get back on their feet again. I hope more of these clubs will pop up all over Singapore, because at the end of the day, it is not about how many times we fall down, but about getting up each time that we do. This is Bruce for Singapore One. It's great to see people like Jeff working so hard to help the young people in Singapore. Very heartening to see. And look, they have nice good places to hang out now. Yeah. And on that uplifting note, we end today's episode of SG Down. So do join us next week for our Chinese New Year special. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Till then, see you. Take care. Bye. Bye.